Hello. Today we're going to talk about the how to take your image, put it into Illustrator, and then how you can start your digital landscape project. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, open a new file and you're going to title it. I titled mine for the year um, underscore digital landscape. I'm going to just put dig land and then um, your name. Your name there. Now for the width, it's a landscape. Um, so most of your images are probably going to be around 18 wide and 12 height, right? Um, however, if your orientation is like mine and it's a portrait orientation, you might actually want to switch it so that it fits the photograph that you took. So my photograph is actually in a portrait orientation, even though it's a picture of a landscape. Um, but if yours is, you can the other way around, then you can rotate it with this orientation here. Make sure it's set to inches, not points. Otherwise, you'll have a tiny picture. So make sure it says inches there and adjust it to 12 by 18. We have, want a um, high PPI, so 300 is good. And then we can leave it at the CMYK color. Then press Create. So once we have our artboard here, now we can add our photograph. So I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to scroll down to Place. Once I have that, I'm going to go and find my landscape picture. If you didn't already save your landscape picture, you might need to do that first. Um, and then I'm just going to open that up. Once you do that, it moves around with your cursor. So you'll just kind of line it up with the corner of the page. And my file is pretty large, so I'm going to have to resize it. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I hold down shift while I grab from the corner. Hold down shift, grab, move up. Don't let go of shift until after you have let go of the mouse uh, button. So when I look at this, um, my image is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit larger. And then I'm going to move it so you can see this is the edge of mine. Um, I want this side to be cropped, if anything, so that I get all this cool stuff over here. So there is my image. Now, for the image, I want to flatten this out. So right now we have a raster in the spot of a vector. So that means that I want to flatten this out and I can easily do so um, by using by clicking on my selection tool clicking on the image and then going to image trace at the top don't just click image trace it's going to do whatever it feels like what you want to do instead is click the drop down next to it I found that the six colors um, setting for image trace works best for these black and white photos. Um, but if it does give you a little bit too much detail, you can go down to three colors. So I'm going to click six colors. It's going to have this notice that it's going to be slow. Our computers should be able to handle this. Press OK. and then give it a minute. Mm -hmm. 
Now I have my image flattened out, right? It dropped all of the um, colors that were similar and it took only the six most important values and combined them. Now I'm not ready to do anything to this yet because it's still technically a raster. It won't be a vector until I go up to the top and click on expand. And now we have paths. So if I click off of this, you'll notice that as I go around, it will highlight the different objects. Now, if I click on it with the selection tool, the black arrow, it will select the whole thing. If I want to select only an area, I can double click and it will do what's called isolation mode. If I go over to my layers on the right, isolation mode is on and now I'm inside here and I can select specific areas. If I select this area, you can see that I can then change it to a totally different color, right? So that's what's kind of cool about this is you can uh, jump around and do all kinds of different changes. There we go. Control Z to undo. Um, and then if I click off of it, it will exit isolation mode. So at this point, I have vectorized my image. But right now, my image is still pretty complicated. And it... I don't really want, like, I want to maybe smooth out some of these edges here. I think that there's way too much going on in a lot of um, these different colors. So I think I might end up uh, changing quite a bit of this to kind of get them to be even more simplified. So what I'm going to start with is I am going to start to simplify a few different things. I can do that first with the um, magic wand tool. If I click on the magic wand tool, I can select only a certain value or color. So if I come over with the magic wand tool and I select one of these clouds, it'll highlight every color that's similar to that. And if I change it to a totally different color, you'll see how much that changes. And so now everything that was similar to that color is blue, right? Um, what's really cool too is I can use this to pick those up at any point, And then I can also use this to unite them to, um, turn them all into a compound shape. Um, all these different things can be done to kind of merge all of my edges together and make everything a lot easier to process. So I'm actually, I think I'm gonna do that on this real fast. And now every time I click on this, it will select every single blue part here, because it should be uh, a compound shape now. Alrighty, um, so I, I would basically go through with your magic wand tool and kind of decide what you want to be all the same color um, and how you're going to break everything up. Another thing that I'm going to do is um, eventually I want to simplify things. So if I click on this and I select only this area here, actually, let's do a smaller one. Let's do this white area here. I'm going to turn it white. And then I'm going to group it, turn it into a compound shape. Okay. Magic wand tool, got all of that. 
Um, now I'm going to go into object and I am going to um, work on path. So at path, I can simplify my outlines a little bit more. Now it is going to create gaps in my um, drawing. But right now you can see it said I had 12,000 points. So if I move this down, I have way fewer points. If I keep going, now I've got 8,000 points. Keep going. Six thousand points. Keep going. <laughs> Five thousand points. And then down to the very bottom, the fewest amount of points I can. And there we have it. So I have a lot fewer anchor points now. Um, and my edges, if I zoom in really close, you can see that I don't have quite as many anchor points on there. You'll also notice now it's not quite wrapping around some of my objects. So you are running the risk of um, making gaps in your artwork by doing fewer anchor points. So just be aware of that. Um, it's going to change your image somewhat. I would definitely um, do smaller increments for simplifying your, your objects, but then you're also probably going to want to play with these quite a bit. Uh, for example, I said I was not very happy with the way that it kind of made too many little lines in my clouds here. I will probably make those into, it also um, has too few little jumps and stuff in between the clouds. So I want to make this more patterned. I want to make it more interesting. I'm probably going to mess around with this a lot more. Um, but so far, everything I've done is uh, to simplify it. So um, right now you're just going to work on simplifying your objects, simplifying your um, color, your values, and flattening everything out using Illustrator. Don't forget to save your file. When you save your file, you get to save as and make sure you save it um, into your network folder under um, with this title that we talked about before. Alrighty, so that's the first part. The first part of this assignment is flattening out your image. There's a lot to do on my image still, but um, I'll be playing around with that for a bit. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something.